מצא הקדוש ברוך הוא כלי מחזיק ברכה אלא השלום. It's written that Hashem יתברך, he could not find a vessel to contain the bounty, to contain the blessings, except of peace. means that peace, and it means shalom. That is the main thing that we should work on to be blessed, if we want to be blessed. What does it mean to be blessed? First of all, that we'll have the, the, the desire, the urge to achieve it. So, what does it mean to be blessed? To be blessed, it's exactly what it's written in all the prophecies, in all the promises of the Creator to His people, that when we will be blessed, we will not lack a thing. We will have the food when you need it, we'll have the drinks when we need it, we'll have a house, we'll have a homeland, we'll be protected, we will be able to sit and be quiet and relax and calm and everything we'll have. And yes, it's true for us today, it sounds like a fairy tale. We saw it once in Cinderella, we saw it once in Tinkerbell, she had those moments of us. We never experienced it. Why we haven't experienced it? Because we never been in that place of having peace. Peace starts in the person's body. It's written that the person should have shalom ba'atzamav, peace in his bones, in his structure, in his inside. First of all, you need to make peace with yourself. And then, after that you achieve peace with yourself, so then you can go with that attitude, without that healthy and, and positive approach, to go and to heal the relationships around you. You can go and treat your family members in a nicer way, and to communicate with them more, and to build with them. And then, after that your house is built and stable, you can go out and you can start giving classes or whatever, inspiring other people. But if your house is not fixed and you're going to go and try to tell others, or if you haven't fixed yourself and you go now and try to fix your partner, your wife, your husband, then like she looks at you and she says, come on, what are you talking about to me before you fixed it by yourself? I know you, you haven't fixed it, so how do you want, why you want me to fix? So, it caused a war. The fact that you haven't accomplished the first stage and you already jumped to the second stage caused a war. That what we can see today with the Orthodox and religious communities that are going and trying to influence the world and to make Bala Tshuva and trying to convince people and what does it cause? A, a war reaction. No, you're not going to tell us what to do, we're not going to, you, we're going to tell you what to do, and everyone are battling and fighting, and why? Because we haven't fixed in the beginning. The beginning of Shlom Bayit, of peace, a real peace, is that the person will fix himself. Fix himself means to achieve peace within yourself, that you're going to be your own best friend, that you're going to get along with yourself. That's the beginning. If you don't like yourself, so how can you like someone else? You cannot. When you still hate yourself, when you are still your worst enemy, if you still want to revenge yourself and to punish yourself and to, 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 to kill yourself, so you cannot show no love because you don't have it. You can give only from what that you have. And if you don't have love, and if you don't have patience, and if you don't have wisdom of understanding and sensitivity to yourself. So how can you be sensitive to someone else's condition, to someone else's place? You must develop those things and those are the early stages, those are the main things that we need to work on if we really have that in mind, that holy desire to go and to influence and to help and to do good for other people outside. In the end of this story, when people are going to achieve shalom, peace, in, in their own communities, in their own towns, in their own nations, what that will happen is that people will go out and then we will create peace between the nations. And the world will be united 
and everyone will will support each other and will understand each other and it will be one purpose for the wide world everyone to do the best that they can every nation will give from their talents from their abilities from their wisdom from their power from them their wealth and whatever they have in their land in their abilities capabilities they will take it all and we all together going to invest in one purpose to know God to, to believe in God, to reveal godliness, to make everyone strong and, and powerful, then really we're going to care about what that goes on in Africa, what really goes on in, in the Arab countries, what really goes on in Europe, in America, whatever, all some parts of the universe in Israel, really we're going to care, not only in the news, not only in front of the camera, we're going to pretend like we care, just really we're going to feel the sorrow of people, and not only people, also animals. We're going to care about the animals. We're going to care about the ocean. We're going to care about the whales. About the we're going to we're going to feel those things. E everyone, not only the ones that really today care about dolphins, they will have the ability to share with their thoughts to share their thoughts with the rest of the people, and we're going to listen today. We're acting like we're listening. Okay, yeah, I, I care, but you don't really care. Okay, she cares, but she cares. Yeah, she's crazy, so she cares. No, <laughs> she's not crazy. She's just that unique soul that God chose to put it in her heart to care about the dolphins. And someone else, he cares about the weather. And someone else, he cares about the economic. And someone else, he cares about something else. And everyone needs to care. Someone cares about the Torah and learning and praying and keeping mitzvot. And, Everyone are great, and we need everyone. We cannot deal with all the wide world if people are just learning Torah or taking care of the dolphins. You just need really to fix it all. The ones that cares about dolphins need to spend their time with the dolphins, go to the sea, and thinking, and, and everyone needs to invest their talents and their power and their wisdom and their sensitivity and to show the world that there is beauty in the world and to uncover the beauty of the world. So how can people do that? First of all, they need to achieve that inner peace because the secret of, the, that, of that attribute, of that midah of peace, is communication. The way to achieve peace is only through conversations and long dialogues and explanations and that every side will explain himself and that to the other side it will be important to heal the first one. If you don't care about what he got to say, you will never gonna understand his intention. So the main way for creating peace is to build a conversation. So the first conversation that the person should build is his own conversation. To have your inner conversation, inner dialogue, to speak with yourself, to speak with your soul, to speak with your inner child, to speak with your fears, to speak with your doubts, to speak with every voice that you have inside of your mind and to listen to him first of all carefully. Now you have fears, you have so much stress, you don't know what to do with yourself, you feel like you're about to lose your mind and nothing happened or just small thing happened and you feel like you lost the ground under your feet and you don't know what to do. Okay, great, let's talk about it. Let's talk with ourselves about it. Let's try to explain ourselves exactly what we've been through, what we went through in that situation. Okay, now, I got that enveloped in the mail. Yes, it was written that it's from the government, from the city, from whatever. Great, wonderful. Now, I was terrified. I didn't know how I'm going to open it, what's going to be written in the end. I opened it and I realized, okay, the same nonsense like last year, the same things that I really can deal with, but why am I so afraid? A person called me a few days ago and told me about the problem that he's got today. I told him, listen, your problem is not that problem that you're describing. The reason that you suffer now because of that threat, because of that issue that is bothering you so much today is only because that you've been traumatized many times before on that topic. 
The reason that you're afraid now from what that will happen in three, four days is only because that you remember that once you were standing in that exact same situation and you couldn't handle it and you lost control and you lost something important, maybe even only your self-confidence, but you lost something in that day and you're afraid of that day and not of that day. You're afraid of the emotional pain that you remember in the back of your head and from experiencing it again, you're terrified. So now you have a problem. Not because really you have a problem three days from now, just because you don't want to go to the same emotional pain that you experienced in your past. And that's your problem. Your problem is not in the reality. Your problem is in your mind. Your problem is in your way of thinking, that the memories are attacking you and beating you up and pushing you down to the ground and humiliating you and destroying you and you're not overpowering yourself on them. You're not standing strong enough and breaking your thoughts, your negative thoughts of despair, of sadness, of humiliation. And instead of that, what are you doing? is you're freezing yourself, shutting yourself down, and not being able to deal with the future, and you are causing yourself serious, severe damage in the future, and nothing happened. And really, you don't need to, because really, in the future, maybe it's your best friend, maybe it's an amazing opportunity to grow and to develop and to succeed, but you're terrified. From what? Not even from those kind of problems. Because let's say that it's going to fail, so what you're not going to have? Money, so what you're not going to have? A job, okay, so what you're not going to have? A place to stay in, okay. All of those are problems that in life we already saw that can be solved. So you're going to look for another house. So you're going to stay for two weeks in your parents-in-law house. I, it's hell, I don't want to do that. I hear you. I know that. I've been there. We've done that. We don't want that. No, no, we don't want that. Okay, yeah, we've been there. We don't want that. Don't do that. Okay, relax. Now breathe again. We're not doing it. But it can be done. If worst comes to worst and you really need to go through it, you can handle that. That's not the problem. The problem is those emotions that you experienced back then that you felt that you don't have no control on your life, that you were praying and you were not being answered, and that you cried again to Hashem, and Hashem Bach didn't answer you, and you thought you're going to make it, and in the end you failed, and all of that humility was too much for you. And you have not built yourself until today enough to deal with this situation again, so you're terrified from it. But it's not really exist now in the future, it exists only in your past, only in your memories. So, the main question is, first, why in the world Hashem is not answering our prayers? Like, what's going on with you, Hashem? Right? That's a rude question that must be asked, because if we're not going to answer that in the end, so we don't understand what's going on here, we're in a loop. Okay, so I will find myself in the same situation again because Hashem will not going to answer to me. So what am I doing? I'd rather to hide and to bury myself in darkness and not to move and not to fail again. If Hashem is not about to answer, but Hashem will answer and there is a way to find that connection with Hashem that Hashem will wake up His mercy and will choose and will decide to uncover His greatness and His glory and His kindness and to support us and to build us. And like we said before, that is the redemption, that is the salvation and it is coming, it is about to come. The only question is how to do that. And you learn those things from your life experience. You learn those things from the effort and the sweat and the tears and the blood and the difficulties. And that's exactly the reason why actually Hashem didn't answer back then. Because our approach back then, the way that we came back then was not perfect. And there was something over there that was still lack, still lack, we lacked of that thing. And we didn't know exactly what are we doing. And that's why we haven't been answered. But now, 
after going through a certain process of humility, of learning things in the hard way, we achieved certain things that were so important and required for us as people that without those tools, without those lessons, we would never been answered. So it's so great that we've been humiliated until now, but now it's the time to learn the lesson and to grow and to go above those tests and to break that pattern and to become different and to contain the bounty, to have and to build those vessels that will contain the bounty. So the answer for sure now is required and important. How we gonna build the connection with Hashem in a way that will build us and not gonna destroy us, not gonna ruin for us. So I'm gonna explain you something small and from that we all gonna learn a big lesson. Hashem Barach, when He created the world, so He moved Himself to the sides. I explained it many times in the classes. Please, that's why we opened and built and developed our amazing website, and that's why Facebook and YouTube and all of those amazing um, companies built their, uh, their, their websites for you to be able to go back and search in the early videos and to enjoy them. So those deep explanations are already in old videos, but when Hashem Barach decided to create the world, we'll make a long story short, He moved Himself to the sides, and He, so to speak, created an empty space from His godliness. In a way, He hid Himself from us. And into the center of that emptiness, of that darkness, He sent a beam of light. And that beam of light created the world, means created those, those curtains that are blocking from us the way to see His godliness. When He created the world, He created that wall that is separating us from Him. But who are we? We are Him. Our souls are godly souls. Parts of heaven from above. And that's who that you have inside of yourself. Now, when you put two drops of water on the same surface, they have a desire to come back to each other. They have that nature inside of them that they want one drop, one to join and connect itself to her sister. And we and the Creator were like brothers in that aspect. And like the Deorah Chaim HaKadosh is saying, that we are the brothers of the Creator. Ki tir'eh shor achicha, if you're going to see the animal of your brother, the Deorah Chaim HaKadosh is explaining the meaning of the word your brother, it's HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's the Creator Himself. When He send us to this world to stand from the other side of the wall that the light of the Creator will be blocked from us, He actually sent Himself to that mission. He sent His light that it was Him to be blocked and sealed behind those curtains. Now that light that it's our soul our souls are desiring 24-7 to come back to our source. And that's why the Zohar Kadosh is calling our souls Maim Bochin, crying water. That they are crying from the moment that they've been separated from the Creator, that they came back, that they came into a physical body, and you can see it with a baby. First thing that he's doing is screaming. Why? Because he just been separated from the source, from his source of life, and he realized that now. And you cannot help him. You can ease the pain. You can love him. You can give him hope. You can feed him. You can give him something. You can wrap him. You can kiss him. You can promise him thousands of promises. But really, he will keep on screaming and crying and kicking until he will reach 120 years and then he will set free. And then he will feel that pleasant 
of Hashem, to become one with the Creator again. So, first of all, we're understanding those 120 years of us being here on earth are prison. It's prison. It's prison for life. It's prison from life. You are now in prison. And from that prison you need to remember and keep reminding yourself that there is hope. That in the end of that journey you are bringing yourself back to the hands of the loving Father, of the Creator. Now, there is a way to wait. Okay, I'm gonna just sit and chill here in prison. Wonderful, I'm gonna hang out. And Okay, we'll see. In the end, we'll see. But, there are other souls that they cannot stand that prison. And they are willing to break the bars, to break the walls. They want to run away. They don't care if they will risk themselves. They don't care to be wounded. They don't care to fast and not to eat, to be thin enough to run and to hide and to sacrifice and to learn ways how to escape and what to do. And there are others that are good children, good boys, sitting and learning and hoping and yearning and davening three times a day. They're doing what the officers are telling them to do. You have many ways how to spend the time in prison. Maybe they're going to kill you one-third earlier and you're going to be set free. So it's like they're going to clean one-third on good behavior. Okay, but the other people and I kind of understand them more, and those are those rebels ones. Those are the ones that are not able to fit themselves into that cell, even if they don't have a choice. And why is it happening to those souls? Why those souls are not able to function in a routine? Why they cannot have regular, normal schedule? Why every day they cannot wake up in the same hour and to do the same thing? Why every day they have a, 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 a thing goes on? Why every day they, they're struggling and every day they have adventures? And, and, and why is it happening? Because the, the crying water inside of their soul are crying hard. They still have a very strong memory of that feeling of being united with the Creator. And that's why they can't sleep, and that's why they can't eat, and that's why they can't function, and that's why they cannot put themselves into no kind of schedule, because something is bothering them. What is bothering them? The fact that they're afraid to forget the real purpose of their life, that the real purpose of our life is to come back to Hashem, and they want to do it now. Because they're afraid that if they will let themselves go to sleep, if I'm going to let myself go to sleep, I might forget the purpose of my life. And those inner voices are getting louder and louder until a person can feel the holy desire to, 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 to take off all, all of his cloaks and all of his costumes and all of his physicality, all of his body, and then he doesn't really care anymore about this world, and he's got only one very strong, solid purpose in life, and it's to, to be with Hashem. So people are finding for themselves many outlets, many ways how to feel spiritual, how to feel spirituality, how to connect themselves to infinity, and many people are going in those ways, and they're in a way lost. But the truth is that we don't really know what they're experiencing and how close they really are to Hashem. And soon we're going to come back to that understanding of how peace is the secret and the solution for that problem. So first of all, we're going to try to understand ourselves. Inside of ourselves we have that noise, we have that voice that is always pushing us to do and always tell us, hey, you must do this, you must do that. You must. Even if it's to eat, even if it's to drink, even if it's to wake up and to run and to start another hobby and another hobby and to take another course and to sign up for another year in learning and, and open university and I don't know what, another year in college and, and then he's dropping in the middle of the year and going and changing subject and now he needs to do sports and now he needs to go to the Caribbean islands and now he needs to go to Israel
Israel, and now he must learn in yeshiva, and at least to go for one year to live in Tzfat, and to learn in the Midrashah. It doesn't matter. It just shows that you're crazy, and it's okay, because that craziness is, is, is your healthy part that is screaming, I'm in prison. That's your sanity that is screaming, I'm bored from life. I don't want to be a robot. Don't put me in a box. Don't put me in a cell. I must run away. So one day he will work in the kitchen, and the next day he will help the guards, and in the third day he will clean the backyard, and then he will do this, and then he will volunteer. And his mind is out, and he wants to be out, and he wants to be free. So he will try music, and he will try alcohol, and he will try drugs, and he will try whatever you're going to give him the opportunity to try, he will jump on that. And only because that his sanity is calling from him to him from inside. From inside. Because Betoch Ami Anochi Shochenet, the Shechina Kedosha lives inside of its people, inside of us. Vasuli Mikdash Veshachanti Betocham. After we built the temple, Hashem from that moment, He lives inside of us. Inside of your soul. And your soul is talking to you and telling you what you need to do. How you're going to run away from your prison. And you must listen to those voices. And to try not to act crazy, but to be aware to your inner voice. Not to follow every idea, because not every idea is right. Not to go and to do every crazy thing that you feel and you have in mind, because it might be wrong and you might be punished or suffer for it. But to understand that your soul inside of your body is not quiet, because that you hear the crying water crying from inside. And the solution for all of that pain that we feel inside of our souls is the peace. And what does it mean? Like we said, the way to achieve peace is through communication. We must have an open discussion if we want to switch opinions, if we want to compromise, if we want to achieve peace. So also inside of yourself, when you have two voices that are arguing, that are fighting, that are contradicting each other. You want to do Chuma, <coughs> you want to go to Israel, you want to learn, you want to have and you want to do it for the dude, you want to go to Uman, you want to learn and to have Panasa, you want to work and you want to make money, you need to spend time with the children, your wife and your family, your father in law, you want to visit him, you want to go over there, you don't have time, you have another meeting, you want to work on your music, okay, great, you want to work on your shape, okay, you need to go, you need to take out your wife once in a while, okay, great, you need to place your car, okay, you're done, all right, you're finished. The only way to fix it is with fixing yourself, is to understand that you have many, many voices inside of your mind, and you must understand that those voices are exist for a reason, and you must have a deep, meaningful conversation with yourself and to write things down if it's hard for you to remember. And to ask yourself, okay, who am I? I have a desire to run and I have a desire to rest. I have a will to hear music and I want to be left alone and to sit quiet. I want to live in the nature, but I'm afraid of darkness. I want to have my own house, but I'm not willing to pay the price. Okay, so who am I? A crazy person? A lost person? No, that's not the answer. Who am I really? Now you wrote to yourself, I want to buy a house. Great. You wrote to yourself, I want to learn a profession. Great. What are my options? What are the costs? How much is going to cost me? Time-wise, money-wise, sacrificing myself, the family, the needs, other people that are involved in that thing, in that amazing idea that I have. Great. Now write those things down for yourself. Think, communicate with yourself. Try to listen to yourself and create from that list a list of priorities. Okay, now great, I have those dreams, I have those goals, I have those desires. Some of them are very holy, some of them are just very, sounds like they're very satisfying. Okay, what is more important? 
When you have a sick person, first of all, you check if he's breathing, if he's got pulse, first of all. Second, you check if something is broken, but not the first thing. First of all, you need to check if he's breathing, right? Okay, so first of all about yourself. Check your head is above the water or not. Your dreams are here. Are you able to execute them? Are you able to achieve them? Can you leave those kinds of dreams? Or maybe it's just an illusion. Maybe those thoughts are just confusing you. Who are you? What do you really want to do? And after you're going to dissect yourself, after you're going to make that investigation about yourself, you're going to find very deep, very meaningful things about yourself. And when you're going to understand those things, okay, now you decided you want to make Aliyah, for an example. You want to move to live in the Holy Land. Great. Now, can I do it? No, I can't. Why? My children are here in school. We have a business that is in develop, and I have few things, and I have few debts, and I have few relationships, and I have my parents, and my parents-in-law, and we have a mortgage on the house. Okay, great. So should I drop that dream? No. Maybe I can plan my life in a way that in five years from now, I might be able to make Aliyah, or maybe in seven, or maybe in 27, but still, at least I'm not going to drop off my dream. And I'm going to keep on dreaming and keep on planning and keep on living my life with a purpose and not going to be confused because I cannot achieve my dreams and now my wife, because of her parents, we're not going and because of the job and the boss is not setting me free and why I didn't start it earlier and you lose your mind because of the same reason. You want to make Aliyah. But you gave up on your goal, you gave up on your dream, and you decided to be crazy and lost, so now you're going to drop that ball and someone else will pick it. But you can still hold that ball with you and to keep on walking, one step after the other, and to achieve all your dreams and all your goals. Just for that you need to have a settled mind. You need to work on your thoughts. You need to bring your thoughts to the surface. You need to work on your awareness to find your true self, to know who you are, what you desire and from which motive, from which reason you desire that. You want to learn Torah? Great. Is it because that you're so holy that you desire the holy letters and to keep the commandment of Hashem? Or just that it's a very good excuse for you to go every day out from the work, one hour break to pray Mincha, and also to have another one hour at evening out from the house exactly in the time of showers and, and, and supper and whatever, and Dafayomi, great, and Mayriv, Mayriv, very important, great, and you're not going to tell no one that during all Mayriv you were texting and WhatsApping all of your friends. Okay, so... The truth is that we need to check ourselves. Why really you want to learn Torah? Why really you want to go and pray in the Minyan? Why really you want to go to the Holy Land? Are you really desire to be one with your nation in the Holy Land? Or that just you can't stand New York anymore? You can't stand California anymore? And you must find an outlet. You must find... A... You think that Israel is what? I'll tell you about it in a different day. Israel is amazing, it's nice, but it's still difficult, it's still hard, it's not easy to go and to fa face the, the language barrier and the economic and things that are working very different that are working here, things that you don't used to. Go and try to, to, to pay our nona the taxes in the city hall, I'm telling you, you for sure booking a ticket back to the U.S. You come, you tell them, listen, I, I want to pay my, my, my debts in the city hall. That's it, like, you, you can't. No, I'm sorry, you can't. Okay, but you, you closed my bank account. Yes, we know. Okay, so I want to pay. No, you can't. Okay, so what do you want to do? Sir, can you speak Hebrew, please? Like, what are you going to do now? You don't know the language. You want to pay. You brought money with you. They're not willing to take your money. And you don't have a bank account now. Okay, what you should do? Book a ticket and to go back to Wisconsin, right? Every place is better than them, right? 
No, it's not true. Just that you need to progress in stages. You need to build yourself. You need to plan things right. And you think, and not because that it's the truth, only because that your mind is confused, and because that you're counting on other people's opinion, that Hashem is not helping you, that Hashem is not satisfied with you, that Hashem is upset with you, and that Hashem will punish you, and that whatever you do in life is not worthy and not good and not enough, and it's not true. Hashem doesn't look at you in that eye at all. Hashem is happy with you, but I'm not learning. Yes, but Hashem, He loves you, and He cares about you. Yeah, but I'm not davening, and I never go to shul, and I'm not doing A, and I'm not doing B, and I'm not doing C, and from D I forgot already long time ago. Yes, but Hashem Barach, He doesn't care so much about those things. Really, there are things that are much more important to Hashem Barach. For an example, mitzvot that are between people are much more important to Hashem Barach than mitzvot between the person to God. That you will be nice and kind and patient and, 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 and lovely and generous is much more important to Hashem Barach if... You put filin Rabbeinu Tam today, or you haven't. If you prayed and stood Shmona in the Netzach Hama in a Minyan, or that you prayed alone in the house at 8 o'clock or 9.30 or 5 before 11. Hashem Barach, He told us His wisdom, but also some of the wise people misinterpret Hashem's intention. It doesn't mean that they're all wrong, but what that is sure is that you're not allowed to ignore your inner voice. Because from the bottom of your heart, Hashem is calling you. Lecha amar libi, to you, your heart is telling, Bakshu panay tamid, look for my face, always. Rashi is writing on that verse, that the heart is the messenger. Lecha bishlichutcha, I am your messenger. The heart is saying to Hashem, to tell that person to look for your face always. Your heart is the speaker of the Creator and He's telling you always what to do with that pure intention of finding Hashem. So if you find yourself in a situation that you don't know, there is a wife in the picture, there is a Beit Midrash in the picture, there is money in the picture, there are children in the picture. You need to listen to your heart. So if your heart is impure, if your heart is twisted, so you cannot listen to that voice because your heart will tell you nonsense. So first of all, when you check yourself, you need to check the purity of your heart. Why do I want to learn Torah? If it's really because of my holy desire to connect myself to Hashem or that I just can't stand her anymore and I must go for at least one hour every evening. Okay, great. With that impure intention, if you will go to Beit Midrash, so it's written that if the person haven't purified himself enough, and now he's learning Torah, so that Torah will become lethal poison for him. Lo set lo samavet. You don't want to die, right? You don't want to die. Unless you say, no, I want to die. That's it. I had it. It's enough. No. You don't want to die. Because maybe you never experienced what real life is all about. That's why you can give up. That's why you lose hope. Because you never really tasted Hashem. But Ta'amu, Ukitov Hashem. If you will taste, you will see how good Hashem is. How are you going to taste? How are you going to see? If you're going to listen to your inner voice that is calling you always to come closer to Hashem. So try to clean yourself and to clarify for yourself who I really am, what really goes on inside of my mind, in the back of my head, why I'm so aggressive, why I'm so offensive, why I'm, 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 I'm so upset, why? What was so upsetting in that sentence that I just heard? That rebuke, why it was so horrible for me? Because it came from her, because it came from him, because it was touching certain points that I'm not willing to deal with. So maybe it's time to deal with those points because I don't want to be so hurt. I don't want to be so broken, so, 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 so fragile that every word will destroy me. 
that every experience will shake my happiness and my stability in life, that I'm going to lose my mind because of every penny, that I'm going to have to calculate every can of, of, of soda that I want to buy in the grocery store. No, I don't want to live like that. I want to be calm. I want to be relaxed. I want to be able to breathe. And I'm wasting so many hours in my life on being angry and upset and sad and frustrated and crazy. So maybe I'm going to have an open discussion with myself and I'm going to try to understand that it's better to do less with the right intention than to take too much on yourself and to lose the intention and to lose your mind and to be crazy that is acting and justifying himself like pretending to serve Hashem, pretending to be religious, pretending to be holy, pretending to be honest, and actually in the beginning, first baby steps, he doesn't make. He doesn't have even an inner peace with himself. He never forgive himself yet on what that he did when he was 14, on what that he answered to his mother when he was 17, and he still have that grudge and he wants to revenge himself on fighting with that person or hitting his sister or whatever. And he still haven't healed himself from his childhood. Now he wants to become a man, and he wants to become a mashpia, he wants to teach. You, you must start somewhere. And the best place to start is in the beginning. And the beginning starts with yourself. That you will have an open conversation with yourself. A true understanding. And now, when you reach that true understanding about yourself, I need to eat my breakfast with bread before of 10 o'clock. That's my first understanding for today. Great, now follow that understanding. Count on yourself and follow that. And you will see wonders. Because you're going to see that your inner voice is never lying to you. Never betrayed you. Never, never fooled you. But you need to count on Him. And only through that conversation you will be able to take more information from that endless source of wisdom that is your heart. Because it's connected in 100% to the sea of wisdom, to the sea of souls, to the Creator, to infinity, to the endless. And when you clean yourself and you clean your channels, and you let the wisdom of the Creator speak from inside, suddenly you find a path in the middle of the forest, in the middle of the jungle. You find a path. You find a way. Small sparks will open and shine for you a path to success. And yes, it won't be short. It won't take one day. It might be long. It might require a lot of effort. But in Yagata, if you will put that effort, Umatsata, you will find Tamim, faith. You will find real faith. You will find an inner solution to solve all of your problems for good, forever. Because a person that counts on Hashem, only kindness is going to surround him. Every person that counts on Hashem, his prayers will be answered. So why our prayers have not been answered yet? Because we were praying from an awkward place, from a place with no confidence, with no self-esteem. We were praying only because we were terrified, only because we were lost. And that's the difference between our old prayers that brought us to many disappointments to our prayers that we're going to pray from today and on. Because Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. So you must be honest when you open your mouth and you talk. I have a class, I think that the name of that class is How to Pray and to Be Answered. I think that's the name of the class. It's very important to watch that class. It's a short class that explains a very detailed, short explanation on how to pray, how to take your thoughts into actions. How to take a problem in your life and just to explain it, to open it in front of Hashem and to say the truth. Hashem, I need money. That's not the right request. Not that you don't need to pray for money. If you need money, you need to pray for money. But 
there is a reason why you don't have money and you need to find that reason and you need to make a root canal you need to go to the root of the problem to do shuva on it and to solve the problem in the beginning because if now you hurt your your wife and you want to apologize and you're going to come to her and you're going to tell her listen babe i'm sorry it's not enough it's not going to solve the problem why because her problem is not that you're not saying I'm sorry. Her problem is that you don't care enough, that you don't think enough, that you don't ask before you do. She's got a different problem. And you don't recognize that problem, so you don't understand your wife's problem. I'm talking from my side, you know? <laughs> That's like from my life experience. You can flip the camera and have problems with your husband. I don't mind. It's okay by me. I'm just sharing. I'm doing tshuva in public. Now, when you still haven't recognized the problem that she got with you, if you're going to apologize on what you're apologizing, actually you're not apologizing at all. You just try to make her stop crying. You just try to make her happy. But you cannot make her happy by plastering the problems. She's got a real problem with you that you are not aware of. So if you're going to try to plaster and to color it again and again and to glue I don't know what on it, it won't help. And even if you're going to try to pretend that you're serving Hashem and that Hashem, what do you want from me that I'm not going to learn Torah? Okay, you can play the big shot. You can play the righteous man. You can pretend to be whatever you want to pretend. But it won't solve your real problems that Hashem recognizes as your problems. And only when you're going to be honest and you're going to search for your real lackings and you're going to really try to do tshuva, to come back to Hashem and going to have a conversation with yourself, a real investigation, observation, looking, who am I? What's going on? Why is she crying? Not when. Why? What happened? What have I said? Okay, you can ask her. You can start talking with her. It will build the peace. And then that peace, that shalom, will be the vessel to contain the blessings. And you will contain the bounty. You will build ways of communication that will f fill the gap, that will build the bridge, that will build the connection, a relationship ways of communication that's the way to build life to connect the cells to connect the individuals to make them a family and that family to another to make them community and that community with that community to make them a tribe and that tribe and that tribe to make them a nation and that nation and then that na na that nation to make them a, a, a huge public that makes the same thing all together to respect the Creator, the Father of human race, of all creation, and that everyone will live in, in happiness and in harmony. But it starts in your own heart, not in your own house. It starts in front of the mirror, that you will be ready to deal with your weaknesses, to admit in front of your true self, in who that you are, in how much you are afraid, and how much terrified you are from things and how lazy you are and not willing even to deal with your lackings and how far you are from wanting even to fix yourself but when you're gonna find all of those defaults all of those problems you say okay that's that's exactly what I'm trying to run away from that's my sadness that's my depression that's the negativity you're sending me to be depressed. You're sending me to be sad. I don't want that. I want to be happy. It's not true. The real happiness will grow only when you will take responsibility and work on yourself and start fixing. Because as long as you're lying to yourself and denying your reality that you're a liar, you will never going to be a person of truth. And God is with you only when you're saying the truth. Because a liar person can never stand in front of Hashem. Because Dover Shkarim Lo Ikon Leneged Enav, Hashem is not looking at people that are lying to themselves. So you must say the truth. 
even if your truth is to say, I'm a liar, Hashem. Even if your truth is to say, Hashem, I'm lazy. I can't find power. I'll tell you, even though that you tried, it's also not the real right answer. For an example, a person that will tell me, look, I'm lazy. I'm too lazy to pray in a minyan. I'm too lazy to wake up early in the morning to catch mikveh, to catch a minyan. Even a person that will tell me that, and he will be 100% honest. The truth. I'm choosing every day to sleep another hour, another two hours. I'm choosing. I'm waking up at 7, I'm shutting off the alarm, and I'm going back to sleep for another couple of hours. Great. I'm going to tell him, I appreciate your honesty, but you missed the point. You haven't completed your investigation. You have a precise reason why you're shutting off the alarm and we haven't discussed that yet. Why you don't want to go out of bed? What's the real reason that you rather not to feel life, to experience life? Why you choose to bury yourself into that sleep into the day? Even if you know that you're going to hate yourself on that, even that you know that your partner in life is going to scream at you about that. Even that you know that your kid's going to be late again to school. Even that you know that you're going to be fired again from work. Why is it so worthy for you to suffer so much just because you're lazy? Maybe you're running away from something. And the truth is that everyone knows exactly how much they hate life and how much they hate the mornings that are bringing them back to deal with so many things that they don't want to experience. How every situation, like we explained in the beginning of this class, is bringing you back to those ancient memories of all of your emotional pain that you experienced in the past. It's the same husband, those are the same children, same door, same kitchen, same things that are bringing back those memories from the past that I don't want to experience. Until you're going to stop, it won't stop. You have to stop. You have to stop and to deal with it and to ask yourself, so now, do I want to live with him or not? Do I want to fix my relationship with him or not? And if not, so why? Is it because that really I found that we're so different, that we're so separated, that there is no way to fix it? Or that I just don't want to deal with it? Okay, now I found out that I don't want to deal with it. So the question is why? There is always a deeper layer. You can always do tshuva on tshuva. There is always another step because Hashem is endless. And it's part of the nature of truth that it makes you investigate and find more and more about yourself. And the fact that you realize more about your lackings and about your weaknesses doesn't make you worse. You were worse in the beginning, but now at least you develop your self-awareness. Now at least you know on what to work. It makes you in a much higher level and not in a lower level. The problems that you realize that you have and you find them right now were buried very deep underground for the last 20 years. So the fact that you just reveal them, it doesn't mean that it just happened. It means that now you remove a lot of filth and you can see the ground and you can see exactly what needs to be fixed. It means you're in a very good position. It means that you developed. Even though that it's pain, more painful, even though that it hurts more, even though that you were running from that moment at least 10 years, but still, at least now if you will be strong, you will solve those problems and they will not come back again. The way to do it is to do tshuva. To do tshuva means to bring Hashem back into those situations. To do tshuva is to confess. And the halakha, the Jewish rule, is saying that when you want to confess, you need to explain to Hashem exactly what you did. So it means that you must make an investigation about your life. My wife, she was crying. Okay, that's not the sin. That was the result of your sin. Yeah, I was being hard on him. Okay, that also was not the sin. That was the result of your emotions. 
why you felt so stressed that you had to attack her and then by that she went down and started crying because you felt stressed because of something. What was that thing in the middle of the day, exactly when your boss was talking to you about something, she called you. That innocent woman called you because she needed your help. Yeah, you were under stress because of your boss. And your boss doesn't have nothing to do with your wife. Why couldn't you separate between those two things? Because the fears that you have from losing your job are stronger than you. Okay, so why she needs to suffer? Because it's easier to take the anger on hell than on the boss that you're terrified for. Great. Now you made one step in your tshuva. After it, you're going to come to another class and I'm going to tell you exactly how to deal with your boss, how to deal with your fears, but at least you found the problem. So now, if you're going to say to your wife, I'm sorry that I was shouting at you on the phone, it won't solve the problem. But if in the evening you will come and you will make a cup of tea and you will explain, listen, my love, I'm sorry. Today I realized that I'm very wrong. And for many years I'm taking out on you something that goes on inside of me. I'm terrified to lose my job. I'm sorry. I'm dealing now. It's a very hard time in my life. I'm dealing with a lot of fears. My lack of confidence that Hashem, I don't know if you will support me, not going to support me. I'm telling you, my love, I'm sorry that it's all coming out on you. You know what will happen next? She's going to love you so much that it will be the first time in the last 20 years that she's going to remember why she got married with you in the first place. And it's so great. Because now after talking about things, she might even give you the right advice. Maybe she will be able to support you, to love you. And I'm not promising that it will be heaven. You might find yourself facing another wall in life. But if you really want to fix, you will not back off from the truth. Which truth? The godly truth? Yes, the one that lives inside of you. The one that you can recognize. Not the one that's written between the clouds, the conversation of the palm trees that are whispering to each other in the winter day. No. The ones that you can recognize, your inner voice, your conscience, your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, your senses. They will guide you to the path of truth, but only if you will want the truth. The beginning, like we said, it's to create an inner peace with yourself. To have an open discussion, conversation with yourself. Who am I? What's the purpose of my life? Why am I suffering? What are my goals, my desires? What do I want to achieve from life? And what is holding me back? And what's the reasons for all of that? And like I said, if it's hard for you to have an open discussion like that in Hitbodadut, in prayer, so write it down for yourself. And then tomorrow, have another 10-minute session with yourself and open that notebook and read your diary and listen to your voice and try to add another line. Write another paragraph on yourself and find out who you really are and work on yourself. When you want to fix something, you need to have the will to succeed. The will to succeed is your love to yourself, that you will find yourself worthy to invest in, that you will decide to give yourself another chance. That's the meaning of tshuva, to give yourself another chance, to work on yourself, to open for yourself another opportunity for life of honesty, of friendship, of trust, of conversation. Without a conversation, you don't have no kind of communication. And you cannot learn how to talk to someone else when you're still denying your inner world, when you're still not aware to your inner voice, to the voice of your soul that is crying and is yearning to come closer to the Creator, to come back to Hashem. As long as you don't feel that desire, as long as you don't hear that inner voice, you're still disconnected from yourself. 
And it doesn't mean that you're lost. It means that you need to break all of those obstacles, all of those walls that are separating you from your true self. Those walls are the fears. The fears from dealing with reality, with the truth. You're afraid to deal with your fears so you're not experiencing your true self. By listening to the voice of your fears, you can never achieve completion in Avodat Hashem while serving the Creator. You cannot. As long as you're a slave of your fears, you're not a free person. And the redemption depends in that that Hashem will call us all free people. Bekarati lachem dror, that you will all going to be set free. Benechorin will be free. Free from fears, not from effort. Adam la'amal yulad. We came to this world to work, to put the effort. But we need to put the effort to build our life and to achieve our goals and not to run for our lives and to avoid commitments and taking responsibility. The only way to do that is opening an honest discussion with ourselves. What do I want to achieve in life? What do I want to achieve in this relationship? What do I want to achieve in the aspect of career, goal in life? What are my desires? What are the things that I want to do and I'm not willing to give up on those? What am I dreaming of? What do I want to achieve? Those are questions that must be answered. And when you have the answers for those questions, you'll have important goals. You'll have a purpose for life. And then you'll find the power to accomplish them. To live the dream that all your prayers will be answered. And like we said, Hashem is close to everyone that will call Him with truth. When you will start that journey into your true self, you will see that Hashem will answer you much, much more than He used to, than you used to see. Because when you're not calling Him with truth, so Hashem Barach is busy all day long to show you that you're going in the wrong path. That you will understand that you need to switch, to reroute yourself, to bring yourself to the right path, to the golden path, to the right way. So first of all, He had to rebuke you and to show you that you were wrong and to humiliate you over and over. That's why you've been crushed so many times, because you were not honest. But when you will be honest, it's true. It might be painful. But you're not licking honey as for today. So it's okay to work a little bit. So keep on working. But at least you're going to work in the right direction. At least you're going to invest your money, your power, your time, all your wisdom into your life. Into the life of your beloved ones. And then you will fix and you will see results from the effort. Azorim bedim'ah, the ones that are seeding, planting with tears, berinai kzo, they're going to harvest with joy, with songs, with happiness. But you need to plant, to seed, to the right place. That's kedusha, that's purity, that's holiness. Holiness, it's not to separate yourself and to go and to hide in the Beit Midrash. It can be the worst liar in the world. Molest the children, and now he's hiding himself in the Beit Midrash. No, that's not the right way. The right way is to take the responsibility that Hashem is showing to you that you must take. To be involved in your life's family. To be part of the life of your children. To be the husband of your wife, and not the Tamid Chacham that she is married to. To be a father, to be a husband, to be a child to be a brother, to be a friend, to be who that you are. Someone asked me once, what are my intentions when I'm making Kiddush on the cup? I said, to make a Kiddush on the cup. Like, what do you want to accomplish while making Kiddush on the cup? Is it not enough for you that you can make a Kiddush on the cup that you need to have? 
they asked the Lubavitcher Rebbe what's his intention while wrapping himself with a talit. He said that the tzitziot, the strings, won't hit other people's faces while I'm wrapping myself with a talit. <laughs> what, what more than that you want to achieve? You know, put talit. Wrap yourself with a talit. That's it. Hashem said, put talit. Put talit. Finish. Make a kiddush. Make a kiddush. Finish. What else do you want? To live in the stars? To be the Mirkubala Eloki? It's nonsense. It's only titles. Really to be close to Hashem, it's to be a person of truth. It's to be honest. It's to be sensitive. It's to be kind. It's to care. It's to love. It's to be generous. It's to give. Thank you very much. May Hashem bless us all with love and peace and happiness, health and holy wealth and success. Amen. 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 Thank you. This world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.